All right, in today's video, we're actually gonna um, remove these arms and, and bypass it and integrate that into a foot pedal that has two pedals, one for the jog and one for the uh, bending. So uh, if you are like me, you already bumped your head a few times on these and I feel like they do more harm than good. Uh, and then in this video, um, I'm gonna go in a little bit more in depth on how I go about doing that. All right, as a disclaimer, you are doing this at your own risk, so just keep that in mind. Um, this video is, is more or less meant for entertainment purposes, but uh, I just wanted to throw that out there. Uh, but if you know the machine's capabilities, um, um, bypassing it and going with the foot pedal is just the way to go. Also, I want to point out that um, this mod was done by Aaron. He's a guy on the Facebook forums. Um, he talked about what he did as far as the components needed to do the bypass. Um, I'm just kind of making a video and going a little bit more in depth on it so that it's a lot clearer for guys that, um, that want to get this thing done. So as far as the parts you'll need to do this mod, um, you'll need this uh, GX12 uh, connector. You'll need four of these male terminals, and then you'll need the actual kick pedal. This one has two, one for the jog and then one for bending. And then you also need uh, a four wire uh, cable. And for all these, uh, links to all these, I'll leave them in the video description on where to, where to find them. You can find all these pretty much on Amazon. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna do is uh, remove um, the jog buttons here. You can see there is a little Allen key Loosen that up and this thing pretty much just slides out. And then you'll left with these um, two connectors there that, that you'll pull out. Then take these two screws off and make sure when you take these screws off that the nut doesn't fall in. Um, and you just slide this right out. So I'll kind of break down um, this aviation plug real quick. So this is the plug that's gonna replace the one that's in the press brake right now. So, screw this off. So this side here is going to be um, where you connect the cable side, the long 15 foot cable, black cable. And then this side here is gonna be the side that gets, that replaces the connector that's uh, currently in the enclosure of the press brake. You pretty much unscrew this here and then slide this into the hole and then this screws down and you'll have you'll see there it's labeled one two and three i believe you'll use one and two for your your black and red that's going to be off for the uh, kick pedal that does the bending and then the I believe three and four are going to be used for the um the jog buttons and you'll solder these wires come out as well. And then this side here, um, you unscrew this hole, or you unscrew the screw, and you're left with these, um, something like this. Yeah, so you'll, these pins that expose, then you solder onto that as well. So I'm gonna show you some pictures on, you know, how I did it. Um, this is a scrap piece, you can see this cable was too big, so I ended up using smaller gauge wires and then soldering it onto this bigger gauge and then heat shrinking the whole thing to make it work. Uh, but I did spec out a new cable that will work, that where that should fit without, you know, being too large for this connector. So I'm gonna unscrew this real quick and kind of show you those wires or pins that you need to solder. See right there? So you're gonna wire, you're gonna feed this through your cable, have the exposed wires in, and then solder your connectors there. You can see they're also labeled from the back side as well. And uh, I'm not gonna show you how to do it. There's plenty of videos on how to solder your cable on here. Um, just look up aviation cable soldering and you'll be able to find uh, videos on how to do that. But next, I'm going to show you just some screenshots 
of of me uh, making the wire connections. Also, to make this super crystal clear, I created this wiring diagram uh, to follow along with. Um, I just wanted to point out the, the wiring color is slightly different, but I just wanted to show you the consistency on how each uh, wire connects to each component. So what I would do is take a screenshot of this, print this out, and then if you want to find uh, links to the, each component, uh, I left QR codes. Um, you can find everything here on Amazon. And then from there, you should have this cheat sheet along with this video when you do this installation. So next is kind of um, me just kind of taking some pictures of me wiring this up. Uh, you can see I created a Y cable to um, connect the jaw cables until pretty much one button versus two. And then um, I wired the pigtails out of the, uh, I believe the male side of the GX16 cable connector and then just heat shrinked it. And then originally I, I tried to use uh, the 14 gauge cable that I initially bought, but it was just really thick for that um, plug or connector. So I ended up just wiring a smaller gauge to the thicker gauge and then heat shrink in it all. And then I just put a really fat heat shrink and heat shrink the whole thing to, to um, you know, shield it all, I guess. And then next, this is just me removing the factory um, aviation cable or connector. And then next, I go into kind of how I wire it up inside the uh, press brake enclosure. Okay, so I'll kind of explain what's going on right here. I think this is the meat of how the connection works on the inside. So you, these are your two uh, jog buttons, the little green buttons. There's two wires for each. So you can see what you have to do is pretty much connect the two reds together and connect the, the two blacks together pretty much in parallel. So you can see here, I got these two connected going like that, two to one goes to the back. Then same thing, red goes to the green, two to one. And then um, this is the cable for the kick pedal, the double tap. So they give you, when you looked at the connector before, it was three pins. I think I think one is for the shield. Uh, it's actually not connected to anything on the, um, the main uh, cable that goes to the kick pedal. So I think maybe this gets shielded on the on the uh the nut that goes um around it i don't know so we're not going to use the shield there um and then you got the black obviously and then you got the the uh red that goes up in there so that's the connection to the foot pedal and then you bridge these two together to um one so when you look outside the uh, connection you'll have four wires coming out of it so I'm gonna solder these up real quick and then heat shrink them. And I'm also gonna see how these are kind of exposed. You don't have to use these connectors. You can actually just splice through, but I kept it like this just in case, you know, you wanna bring this back to factory. You can, you can just pretty much um, unclick these connectors and re-plug the uh, existing uh, connectors here. So yeah, pretty easy. Okay, so I put a little one of these copper flame resistance um, cloths. So when I heat shrink it, you don't have to heat shrink it. You can use electrical tape, whatever you feel like you want use it. But this is also good to have because when you solder your connectors, you can just make sure that none of that solder, you know, falls down to your electronics. So I just, it's a good way to cover it all that. So now I'm just gonna take these connectors up 
and uh, wire up the kick pedal and uh, we should test it out. All right, so you can see we're gonna take this off. You see there's only two connections here. You have your common and then you have your normal and then normally closed. So we're just gonna use the common and normally open. And it really doesn't matter which direction it goes, but we can match we can match it up to what we have in there. So red, I'll do the common, and then the I believe the other color I have is uh we'll see what, what the color is from the connection. But yeah. Um you can also reuse this piece here for your new connection. This is the uh I forgot what they call this, but yeah, just reuse this piece right there. Just like that. Slides off the other one. So you don't really need to buy one of these. Maybe you can just reuse this one. And we're gonna insert that right there into the new kick pedal. Um, uh, this is gonna be the jog. Bring the ram down, and then this the double tap for the kick pedal. So I'm gonna open this up and wire that up. You can see, normally open. Hit that. Connects these two wires together. Same thing with this one. Push that connects these two together. So we're gonna use one, these two, these two here, and these two here. And you're gonna need some ring terminals to connect it or spade terminals, whatever you have. So these two would go together. Doesn't matter if it's left to right. These two would go together. Doesn't matter if it's left to right. This is for, like I said, this is for the, the kick pedal and this is for the jog. So I'll kind of explain how this goes. So now you can see Hit that, it connects these two terminals together. Hit that, connects these two together. Close with the circuit, essentially. Um, and then we're gonna just install this piece pad like that, put the cover back on. Look something like this after you're done. Probably could have used different terminals to get this cover fully seated, but they're not ever really gonna touch, so maybe it just keeps the dust out, I don't know. But let's put the cover back on and test it out. Now that we have the uh, foot pedal all connected up. I left, I left this cable about, you know, when I first fired it up, about 15 feet. That should be more than enough. And then just rerouted the same way the old cable was. And now we're just gonna reconnect it back up. Like so. And it should look something like that. All right. The machine is home. We're gonna get ready to bend our first part. Yes. Okay. Now, the left side wired for the uh, the jog and the right for the kick pedal, the double tap. So, let's just hold it down. You see? Let's move it down. Move it down. The left and right are green see that it's gonna get to the clamping point good now we're gonna move over to the right with just a double tap and here you go that is the part or the invisible part and come back up and it's successfully bent Overall, I like the install and how it went. Um, if I were to go back and do some things that were different, where uh, I probably would have um, used a um, smaller gauge uh, cable. This is a four wire cable. Um, I believe I forgot what gauge uh, that I used originally, but what ends up happening is if it's too thick of a gauge wire, um, you can see right there, um, has a really hard time going in the, into this particular connector. So I would recommend something um, lighter gauge. I'll spec that out. I think I would go with maybe 22 gauge or something like that. Um, Cause you really don't need this uh, heavy duty wire. Uh, I'm not dragging this all the way around my shop. And I use a kick pedal. It's like this. So I don't have to worry about anything dropping onto that wire. Um, so going back to the back, you can see, um, you see how thick this cable is. 
in reference to um, some of the other connectors. Uh, so I would have just picked something in between um, just to make it look more clean, but this, this still works, it's not a problem. Another thing I would have done differently was uh, I would have made uh, some heat shrink for the uh, connectors that I added. Right now I just use uh, electrical tape just to keep it shielded. But I would have used something to match the other connector there. So here they use this like clear heat shrink. So I would have, I would have used something similar to that. You know, most people that can solder, that can wire, should be able to do this no problem. But if you guys are kind of scared to do that, scared to do the wiring, uh, in the comment section, comment um, custom wire. And you know, I may go out and you know, make a batch of these so that they're uh, plug and play. So this way you don't have to worry about soldering and figuring out which is which. It's more of a plug and play option so that when you, so all you'd have to do is wire it up to your kick pedal and then wire one wire on the inside and call it good. But yeah, I think everybody that buys this press should definitely do this mod. Um, you're not having to worry about whacking your head on these bars that used to be here. And I'll probably just make some cover plates or whatever. Clean up the wiring a little bit to tie some things. Other than that, um, I left the, you know, some slack just in case I'm bending out here for some odd reason. I can kick it the pedal there. But yep, I definitely like this mod. Hope that helps everybody who plans on doing it. Yeah, and then I'll leave uh, links in the video description uh, for the kick pedal and all the parts you pretty much need to, to do this mod. And it's pretty easy. Uh, once you figure it out, it'll probably take you less than 30 minutes or so to do. Uh and that pretty much wraps it up. Um, you can see, you know, removing those arms just makes it a lot easier for my son to help me out when bending parts. Obviously, I'm very careful. I know the machine's limits and I do my job to be super safe when having other operators use this press brake. Um, if you're also looking to do some other mods, check out these other videos here. All right, see you guys in the next one.